so thank you everyone. So today I am going to talk about how do I visualize test scenarios using mind maps. So a brief introduction about me. Who am I? I am Ankita Gopta. Where do I work? I work at Expedia as a software developer in test. So prior to that I have experience in both uh, MNCs and startup. So I have seen like how do people test out things like very fast in a process oriented development or just okay you have to ship out tonight. How do you do that? And you can connect. Uh, to me at Twitter at my handle is underscore Ankita G underscore. Also, I have been a past speaker at conferences, Selenium Conf, Null Con, New Gen Testing Conferences. It's a local chapter. So I have like hobbies also. Like I read like reading novels and all. So this is a mind map. I don't have to give a PPT or like bullet out my points. I draw drew a mind map for introducing myself. So you can draw a mind map for anything you want to. So what are we going to discuss about today? We are going to discuss what are mind maps, why do we need to use mind maps, like how do they help us out in testing and in the end how can we create a mind map for testing, like uh, talk about like from the start when you are doing sprint planning, how do mind maps help you out over there. So Wikipedia says that mind map is a diagram used to visually represent information. It is based out of a central concept and then you have branches or features emerging out of it. And then you develop on those branches. It's kind of like a tree that it grows and grows and grows. So when it comes to testing, what does mind map signify? A mind map is just what you visualize in your brain about the product. It is your understanding of the product. So if you are multiple people working on a team, on a in a team on a single project, it may happen that all of you may end up developing different mind maps, but they will in the end all point to the product. So some people visualize product differently, some people visualize it from a user perspective, some visualize it from a feature perspective. So they will draw their mind maps differently, but they will definitely cover uh, each and every aspect of your product. So mind maps are not you, new. They have been like around uh, since third century. So this is Charles Darwin, Tree of Life. It's like something similar to a mind map. You can see he started realizing that uh, in evolution there's relationship among different species and he tried to draw them out in a tree-like structure. So they are like, they date way back. So, uh, so recently we've thought like if Charles Darwin could use it, why not we as testers or quality engineer people use it in our day-to-day -day life? So why do we need to use mind maps? How can they help us? So let us start from sprint planning, right? So you have a sprint grooming session, like what are the tasks which we need to do? So sprint grooming, the technical lead comes in, PM comes in, they talk about so many things. It's not possible to jot down each and everything, make uh, like link all the stories, how is one service going to affect the other? How is the database going to be linked? So it's very difficult, so you can just, uh, there's a lot of documentation which needs to be done. Then comes the sprint. We write down our test cases, upload them in a testing tool, and then uh, we get it reviewed from the developers. There's too much back and forth going on between developers and you over just over the documentation. Then comes the testing part. We create a test suite, import the test cases, and it's a very cumbersome task. Reiterate over the uh, product. Then comes regression, it just does not end. So again, create test suite, mark its execution, get the reports. So you see, we are spending a lot of time on documentation, whereas we should spend a lot of time on working on the product, like testing it out, working on its features, automating it. So if we can just reduce the documentation time, make it more presentable, readable, and simpler, so that anyone who sees it can just go through it in like half a day or half an hour and not it's not a complicated structure where you just get lost in the tool. So if we can do that, that would be really helpful in our sprints and it would really speed up our process. So everyone over here is, a, uh, is related to testing, like be a software developer in test or quality analyst. We ne everyone knows we never really execute 100% of our test case. There's some 10% which we just leave out. Okay, this must be simple. Why would it break? It's not at all related. But that's just 10% which is, which when goes to life and there's a bug and we're like, oh man, if we could have just tested that part out, it would have been so simple. So 
If mind maps helps in increasing test coverage, it's very simple to read. You don't have to go through tabular uh, forms or even lines, uh, lines in Excel sheet or in any tool. You don't have to go through so many test cases. It gets executed. So you actually have 100% test coverage. Also, when you write a test, the most painful area is the steps. So they're very basic, very mundane thing, which we have to do, but it's necessary because the tool and the structure which we have developed till now, it does so, it asks us. We are working on the product. We have it hardwired in our brain. We've been working on it for so long that the test steps are like something which we don't even read. But when it comes to like uh, testing it out and when a feature changes, we have to update it. It's a, like unnecessary information which we've added into our test cases and it's, it's just an overhead. Like it's for maintenance, we have to uh, update them. So mind maps don't have a test case, they work on an understanding that you know your product in and out. You have, you know all the flows, you know all the features available, you know all the cases. So you don't necessarily have to write the test cases, we know them. So for a newbie, it might be helpful, but when as soon, like in a month or so, they get ramped up on the new product, the test cases become meaningless. So why invest so much time in writing the test steps, whereas it's totally unnecessary. Also, mind map is a tree based graphical structure. It's an image. So scientifically, it has been proven that images stick better in your brain than text. We don't remember any lines, but when we see a movie or an image, we tend to remember it. It's like, okay, it's somewhere on this image, on the left-hand side of the image, somewhere on the right-hand side of the image. So it tends to stay in our brain better. So how uh, can we create a mind map? So first of all is picking up a tool. So there are a lot of tools available online, which are paid, some are free, and some provide like enhanced functionality to your mind maps. Also, if you want, you are a two to three member team, you can just use a whiteboard or a piece of paper to draw your mind map. You don't have to use any tool. You can just start. It's, it's creativity which needs to come out. So what best than a sketch pen, a sketchboard, and a piece of paper to just let it flow. So once you've decided onto your tool, how do you draw it? So mind maps are all based on a central content, like what you want to test. So it is like the trunk of the tree or the place from where all the ideas will emerge. So the very important thing is to identify the central content of your mind map. Like if you're testing out a feature, it may happen that there are four to five core functionalities in it. So rather than putting all of them in a single functional, in a single mind map, you can put each core functionality in a different mind map. So you can use different representational objects like trees or anything like a simple rectangular box or a bubble box to represent your central idea. So once you've figured out what you're going to test in that sprint or uh, what your core functionality is, so it may happen that uh, you have three user stories, all, of three, all three of them are different. So they will have three different mind maps based on the core functionality of the story. So once you've identified that, you create branches out of it. So it's advisable not to go beyond five to six branches out of it. So these branches uh, signify the main features of your functionality, like what purpose does it serve? Like what is it, function what is it going to do? What actions are to be performed? So it's advisable not to go more than five or six, because if you go, the tree will spread, and then again, it will become something which we don't want to manage or execute or go through. So keeping it simple, modular, is definitely going to help you out. So you have, once you've identified your uh, sub-functionalities or sub-features or the tasks which your product is going to perform, you develop on that. So, one, so consider this dog as a software, right? So what it has to do is it just has to eat, sleep, work, and play. Very simple. Even our software is designed to perform some specific tasks. It's not that complicated. It's just us who try to make it complicated. So it just we figure out that uh, the tasks which our product or the functionality is supposed to perform and the, then write test cases. So uh, considering my f uh, dog, what my dog wants to eat, I can have the choices, like what food choices does it like? What is its timing? What does it like to do before and after? So there can be preconditions or post conditions to every actions which we can write. So sleep, what is its cycle? Is it a cron job? 
we can compare it to a cron job. When is it run? What action does it perform? So the functionalities are very simple. You have to modularize it so that they can be tested out and broken up. So I'll give you a demo of Notepad, like how can we use mind maps. So everyone knows Notepad, right? Right? So it has basic menus, file, edit, format, view, help. It, in the file menu, it does some tasks like new, open, save, some tasks. So I have created a simple mind map. Uh, is it visible to everyone in the back? OK, great. So I've done it just for the file menu. I'll tell you how can we develop over it. So file menu has sub functionalities like exit. OK, now it's better. Yeah. So file menu has uh, sub functionalities like exit, save, new, open. So you can add test cases for open a file. Like if we have a supported file format, if the file is already opened in a notepad, if it's an unsupported file, OK. Then we have exit menu in which we have save, cancel, and cancel without saving. And then again, we have save, which is change just saved, save as if it's not an existing file. So if you see, the exit menu also provides a save functionality, and there's a save functionality in itself. So it does not make sense for me to write all the test cases for save again over here, like uh, existing or not. Right? It does not make sense. That's just redundant work, and it's repetition. I don't want to do that. Do that. So in a mind map, what we can do is we can link stuff. So I can link this save to over here, and now it just tells me there's a relationship existing. So I can define on this relationship like what it can be. Is it a duplicate? It, is it like a follow by? Is it a precondition? Is it a post condition? Is it a mapping? What it can be. So this is a duplicate, and I can just write duplicate over here. So now if I see my mind map, and there's some if I see my product, sorry, and there are some changes done to the exit functionality, and I go see the cha uh, test cases for the same, I know I have to say, check save, cancel, and without saving. And then I see a relationship arrow going on. It tells me that its impact is even more, so I have to do more testing. So instead of just going through folders or trying to figure out in my whole test suit, like what is the impact and where do I find the next test cases? What do I need to test out? I don't know, like where is it going to impact? So a mind map gives a very clear picture of an impact of a product. Like you follow the arrows and it tells you, okay, these things are linked together and they're impacting each other. So you can very easily pick out on your test cases and even while giving estimates, it helps you out. Like you can clearly see, it's not just one area of my mind map which I have to test out. It links to like 10 more things. I need to test those out. So sometimes it happens with us, like when we are testing out something, we underestimate uh, the developer's code. We underestimate how many things it is touching. So we tend to leave out those stuff like, okay, this is something which won't be affected, but in the end it is. So it, it uh, gives us a really comprehensive regression plan also that uh, these things have been uh, touched and takes, uh, impacted, so we need to test them out. So another thing is like uh, there are title bar actions. So if we have a desktop application, we can definitely configure all these actions in our application. So title bar action uh, has minimize. I can just drag and drop and uh, link my uh, sub uh, ideas over here. The tool which I'm using is XMind. It's an open source, freely available tool. Anyone can use it. Minimize, maximize, and I have exit, close button. So now, again, there's no need for me to write down specific test cases for close as they're already existing. I just need to link them up. So I just link them to exit and I'll write duplicate. So if in my project, I change the nav bar, the functionality of the title menu or in a web app, the nav bar, like on exit, I want to have some intended action. I just write those test cases and uh, I can see 
that close is being linked to exit. So I have to test out all these things. And then there's another linking, like which is impacted. So following all these directions uh, will help us in uh, reducing like the time to find out the impact areas, like going through the tool, there are so many folders, subfolders, trying to identify what needs to be done. Also over here, um, we can uh, give priority to our test cases. So there are a lot of um, labels or markers available uh, in tools, in different tools. Some tools provide you a, a report of how many markers you've used, how many one number markers you've used, how many flags you've used, how many uh, task progress you can give. So they give you a comprehensive report on the same also. So looking at a mind map, if I have uh, given a lot of flags, like this is breaking, this is breaking, I need, I need information on this, this has passed. So if I zoom out on my mind map, okay. Duplicate. So if I zoom out on my mind map, if I can summon my uh, Scrum Master asks me that, okay, how many test cases are pending, right? I don't have to go to Jira or any other tool to look them up. Uh, if they ask me, okay, what are the pending test cases? What are the blockers? So everyone is concerned about the blockers in a sprint. They ask me, okay, give me a number estimate. So I don't have to go to my tool every time. I can just simply look up my mind map, count the number of flags, or if they give me a report, I can just simply say. So it gives me a very overall view, like how is my status going on? How much time do I need? And what is my current uh, status of development and all? So this way a mind map reduces time amongst tools, like to search through them, to uh, find out where we are, what is our standing. And I can also link bugs in this, like uh, keep their status. Like these are the bugs I've linked to what all functionalities do they belong? I can just put everything in my mind map in a graphical way, in a structure, so that it gives me a very high level view of my status and it really speeds up my execution. So uh, where can we use mind maps? So we can use mind maps while brainstorming. We are doing a sprint grooming session. There are so many user stories. We go on each user story. Sometimes the user story are not that well defined. Sometimes they are. So we go through them and there are so many small, small points. There are so many linking. Like suppose if a user action is this, what is supposed to be done? We cannot possibly write them down in sentences and uh, develop on that. And that is when we lose on to user experience. So it is very crucial to keep those points in mind and we can use mind maps right from our sprint grooming session uh, to track down whatever is being done. This will also help us in creating test cases. We don't have to go back, remember, look at the MOMs or look back at recordings like what was discussed or go again to PM, okay, in this scenario, what is supposed to be done? We don't remember. So we can use it right from that moment. We can also use it for problem solving. Like we can have our branches at what, when, where, how, so that will help us organize our thoughts into place uh, that what all needs to be done and where am I lacking? Like, what do I need to do? So we can also take notes uh, during a meeting, MOM, send them out. Usually no one reads an MOM if it's in a text, paragraph format, there are like 20 bullet points, no one will read it. But if you send it out in a mind map, definitely everyone will be intrigued enough to go through it. Like, okay, what is this image? Did we just create this in our meeting? So it will be exciting. You can write a novel or a story. You can have your branches at plots, uh, characters, scenes, uh, theme, like the murder weapon. Or you can just have an individual character mind map. Like if you see, if anyone of you has seen Westworld, then you see they have those stories in which, in which uh, every user had a story in which there was experience, incidents, backstory, everything was built for a character. So you can use mind map for the same. Uh, also you can plan your travel. I did mine. This is my travel, US travel mind map. So there's so many things. I come from India and I didn't want to be stuck at immigration or didn't want like, my visa to get canceled at the last moment. There's so many things which I had to do. So I made a mind map for the same. 
So I had my documents all grouped together. I had my flights, like what all I had to do. I had to create an itinerary. So for each of the cities which I'm visiting, I had to create an itinerary, but I didn't want to repeat it over here. Like for Austin, I didn't want an itinerary. So I made a relationship. For each of the cities, I have to do these actions. So you can use mind map for anything. Uh, thesaurus also uses mind maps. So they give you an, um, a graphical representation in which if you see these yellow dots, they're adjectives. They've used nomenclature and they've used a legend to signify, uh, to differentiate uh, in your mind map. You can use the same, like you have UI test, you have DB test, you have internationalization, cross browser. So you can just use different colors to represent a uh, different mind map, different uh, aspects of your testing in your mind map. So you don't have to just like blandly draw everything in black and white. You can use different nomenclature. Also one interesting thing which, if, which they've done is they've given antonyms also. This is a, a graphical representation, but it also contains antonyms along with synonyms. So they've differentiated using a red dotted line. So you can have your negative test cases also in your mind map. So you can differentiate between everything what you've done. So use your own legend, use your own nomenclature, what works best with you, and then you can uh, create a comprehensive test scenario plan for a mind map. So what have we uh, learned till now is, like you create branches based on user features. That is the core thing. Like you really need to understand what your product does and you have to split its functionality. So the more modular you make it, the easier it will be to implement. Then you add all your test features, all your features as notes to your mind map, as test cases. Like if you're doing sprint planning, grooming, you have conditions and scenarios coming up, you add them all to your mind map. Then it gives you a bird's eye view of your feature. Like if you have an area where you don't see too many branches coming out, that's like a red flag immediately. You are missing out on your test cases. You need to add them over here. And you can see if you have if you've created a really, uh, you've covered all the functionalities of your mind map, your uh, mind map will be balanced. Like you won't have too many test cases in one area and too less in another. So it will also help you in organizing your time. Like once you know how many things you have to execute, you can visually see them out rather than a number. You can uh, give better estimates and execute a better uh, in your sprint. Uh, you can get a really good impact analysis by drawing relationships amongst different uh, objects and different branches in your mind map. So you don't have to go through folders or see or wait for developer, in fact, to give you an impact area. Okay, I've changed all these files and the impact extends out to um, these, these area of the product. You can very well do it on your own. So uh, mind map does not give you end-to-end -end test cases because as we saw, we are breaking it out on features and uh, user actions. So if you need to create end-to-end -end test cases from a mind map, you need to connect branches. Like after branch one, you can go to branch two and branch two in itself is divided. So you can get a lot more test cases than you can ever get while writing them out in a test tool or in any Excel sheet or anything. So how is it different from others? We know a lot of diagrams exist in the industry. So there are flowcharts. So flowcharts are like end-to-end -end test cases. They give you conditional uh, operations. They give you processing units. They give you input types. So mind maps, flowcharts can be derived from mind maps. You go to branch one. The next step, what you want to do, you go to branch two. And then you pick up a sub-branch and you follow it. So flowcharts and end-to-end -end test cases can be created from mind maps. So ERDs, ERDs are basically, uh, you wrap up entities in objects and then you show how uh, different objects are linked via those attributes or entities. So for, if I had to convert this diagram into a mind map, the object, employee, department, dependent, and project would have been my branches and all the attributes in that would have been my sub branches. So next, for each of the attribute, I could have written my test cases. So if I'm doing a DB testing, I need to write validations, like valid values, minimum, maximum, when it is updated. So I cannot do that in an ERD. But from an ERD, I can definitely create a mind map and add test cases. 
to it. So suppose if um, a date is uh, something which cannot be changed or which cannot be less than the current date, right? So I can add those all those test cases in my mind map. So it is rather than uh, writing down tabular test cases, I can simply convert ERD to mind map and then it will be pretty simple for me to add test cases for each and every attribute. So for a use case diagram, it links entities to the actions they perform. So if my application is uh, has a user role uh, based functionality or gives user based provisioning systems, I can add users as a different branch to my mind map and then link all the users to the branches, the user to the specific branch to which they have access to. Sometimes it happens that user has only read only access. They don't have any write or sorry, uh, execute access. So I don't need to perform those test cases. I can just link that user to the read only branch or the read only test, case, test cases and um, create a kind of like a use case diagram in my mind map only. So uh, that's all for mind maps. So this was kind of like to help you out to start using mind maps. I know it has been tough for me to send it out. There's no way to track it, the thing is. You send out, it's a diagram, no manager or a lead would accept it. They want written because that's how the industry has been working. But it's time we change it because spending too much time on documentation, updating is just waste. We are, we are engineers and we can come up with creative ways to make our work easier and faster. So I really, when I started using it, it was very tough in the beginning, like letting my creativity flow. It's because I've been hardwired to like write sentences, steps and all. But then when I started doing it, I found that I'm only putting in the es essential information and storing it rather than the expected result, the not expected thing, what is supposed to be there. So it is very helpful. And like uh, it was something, it's not very difficult to implement. You just have to create modularize, put whatever your understanding is on a piece of paper. So you have any questions? Yeah. Okay. One minute. <laughs> I'm ill prepared. I apologize. Hello. Hi. Uh, first of all, I'm blown away. It's, it's a great presentation. Thank Thanks. you. Uh, so it's a two-part question, actually. It's not connected. Okay. The first question is, um, have you thought of using this uh, to track the results of a regression? The results of a regression? Right. Okay, yes. So some tools provide you with a functionality where you can, uh, where you can track what actions you're doing on your mind map, right? You can uh, create a template mind map and for every regression cycle, you can just do put a check. Like if you see in the tool, it gives you uh, markers like check and all. Like you can put a flag, like a check. Where is it? Okay, I don't see it. But it gives you a tick mark something, and then you can uh, use that. And uh, the tool tracks how many checks and how many crosses you have done. So it gives you uh, like your coverage, like how much has been passed how much is still pending and how much uh, has failed. So with every cross, you can even link your Jira ID. So you can save your whole regression test run on one single image. So even if you're submitting it for uh, whenever your release is going, everyone can see it in one page. You don't have to go to folders and subfolders or generate a report. Okay. Yeah. My second question is, yeah. um, have you looked at the possibility of completely replacing a test suite with just uh, mind maps plus exploratory testing? Uh, so for exploratory testing, it is good. It's like helpful, like you create a branch, you're, you're developing the mind map as in when you're testing the software. Like you, you see something, you find a test case, you add it to the mind map. So as a prospect of replacing test, uh, test tools, like that was a question, right? So as a prospect, it is still not an acceptable idea because, uh, because of the numbers and 
like in test shell, you can have, you can actually show, okay, you have thousands of test cases, which is of some value because people still are in that notion that, okay, thousand test cases means it good. It does, it, they're still not, okay, executing thousand test cases is actually good, but uh, companies are still after that. Uh, you should have a large number of test cases. So currently it's not uh, feasible to replace it, but within your team, you can definitely uh, reduce the time you spend on a test suit, on a test tool and spend time on this. It will be like, if you compare the both, the time spent on mind maps will definitely be less. Yeah. Cool. So we had Hi. some, hi. Um, I was just wondering if you had developed any strategies to link um, let's say you did a mind map and then you went off and automated the, some of the scenarios, you have them in Selenium or Cucumber or something, um, to kind of circle back and link that information. Um, if you had any strategies or tools or ideas or along those lines. Okay. So when you're automating something, if you have end-to-end -end scenarios, you cannot uh, link them to a mind map because mind map does not have any end-to-end -end flow. But if you definitely have uh, features UI flows or just specific feature based scenario you can you can do it in the map there are no tools available for that but you can you can put labels or markers against your mind map you don't need to separate something you don't need to maintain something separate for like okay this test case is automated this is not you can just put markers and update over here so there is no tool available currently uh, to automatically link test scenarios and mind maps. Yeah. So I had a question. Um, okay. Just, and you kind of, you, you actually really talked about it at the end and you briefly mentioned in the middle. So it seems as if a lot of the use you use for mind maps is for your own usage. For, um, sorry? That you use the mind maps for your own purposes okay. of, of documentation. And so I guess, and you said it at the end that you found that you can't really use that as a communication tool out to, for example, the scrum master or, or somebody saying, this is what we have done, this is what we haven't done. Right. And that's, that's interesting because we've started to use mind maps and that's actually one of the goals that we have is not only as an internal communication tool, but as an external communication tool. I'm oh, saying, that's great. Yes, this is what we've done here, we haven't done this. Oh, that's great. I think we need to talk after the talk. Yeah, have some insights. So it's really tough to like push people to, okay, this is my execution plan. It's just one piece of paper. People are like, it's just one piece of paper. No, we need something comprehensive. We need lines, lines, lines. So you really need to uh, like send out a message or start uh, something, or maybe you can set it up as a extra goal in your review system. And when you complete it, people will be like, wow, you did something new. You'll get an extra credit in your review system. <laughs> yeah, maybe that will motivate you. It's like of something not conventional. So you can definitely set it up as an extra goal. And when, when people realize how it has been helping you and how it has made work simpler for you, they can start uh, contributing to it. And I think it works best when two people are working so you, you're two member team working on the same project. So if you, it's always better to sit and collaborate your thoughts. That is when the best case, test cases comes out. But it's hard to like document it. Like you have two people, but you can definitely easily document it in a mind map when you have a multi-member team. So it's irrespective of language, it does not have to be how someone writes your test, test cases. Like there are different ways, styles of writing something. It's not, it does not make sense to someone, it makes sense to someone. But mind maps, they're just free of all these barriers. So it's universal, just basic English, no grammar, and you're done. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, but it, it's not so much a question, it's more of a comment. Um, I did yeah. something like this, I wouldn't call it a mind map, but it was a similar concept, I found it was interesting. Um, I look at this more like a, an outline for your testing and then each of your individual nodes of the mind map, you could say we use Rally and we store test cases in Rally. We could create a folder, a test folder in Rally and inside that and map it to like exit save and then put our test cases inside there so that we have this mapping between this kind of high level look at 
what a regression suite looks like or what the uh, testing for this particular sprint looks like. This is kind of a high level that we can show everybody. This is what we're testing, and it takes kind of abstracts some of the details, the, the nitty gritty details mm -hmm. of like what actual test steps we're going to execute and things like that. But we can map that back to Rally so that when we execute our test cases, we're executing off of this, but we go into test folders, execute those test cases, we roll those up into test sets into uh, the sprint, and then we get the execution pass percentage and all the stuff that the Rally brings. It would be nice to have a feature where you could create a mind map and link that all in the rally. And I don't know if that's in the plans or anything like that, but at least you could send that out. It, it, one thing I think I, at least me personally, would avoid is trying to keep track of execution exactly. status on a mind map. Exactly. Because it's never live. It's only as good as the last time you looked at it. And so pushing stuff down into the tools like Rally and, and Jira and whatever other tools mm -hmm. you guys use or that are being used. It seemed like that would be a better place to put the current execution status, but this is a great way to, at a very high level, look at this is what we have planned for the tests uh, for, for this sprint or for regression or, or whatever, things like that. I guess that's, that's the kind of the way that I've used it in the past that I thought was beneficial. Okay. Yeah, that's one perspective. Like, you get numbers out of Rally, Jira. You get really good, really good graphs, I must say. Uh, but definitely you won't uh, be able to see that like you said, the perspective, like where we are heading, have we covered the important core areas or not? Those numbers won't indicate that, but if you have a mind map and you're updating it there, you can definitely see that the core areas are tested and what is left or what is not in terms of functionality. So definitely rally and all, if there's an integration, that would be really great. That when you bring in your test suit, it automatically generates a linking kind of a graphical structure, which says that, uh, which kind of like generates a mind map only, that uh, you have your core functionality, what are the subfolders which we are going to pick up in that. That would be like really awesome. <laughs> so, but sadly they don't have it. Yeah. Hi, yeah. thanks Hi. for the presentation. Thank you. So I had a question like, um, we have new team member coming okay. every time to the team. So between these two nodes, like notepad and file, Right. If there are multiple routes to go to that path, okay. how do we capture it so that the new members know how to go about and what they have done, I can confirm that, okay, they didn't take a wrong path. Okay. So it's like, uh, let me uh, uh, symbolize it with like a login flow. You can log in from various places, right? Yeah. So, uh, so you can, what you can do is, you can add multiple relationships or uh, you can, you can add multiple relationships to the same and you can name each of them, like how they are going, like from the sign up page, okay or maybe for the, from the payments page. So you can have multiple directions or arrows to link how they are going. Or, or what you can do is like, if you have multiple ways of reaching the same place, then those multiple ways must be in different branches, right? Okay. Right. Okay. So those branches can have, so the place from where you can land from place A to B, those branches could be linked. So like you can do it like this or link those branches. So that depends a lot on how you are building your mind map. So from functionality, suppose ABC, you are landing on page A. So you can link functionalities ABC and directly point to page or you can directly like do it like this. So, so most of our test has several steps before you can execute the test condition. Okay. Like here it is notepad, just, just go to file, yeah. right? But we have to execute 10 steps before you can execute the test condition. Right? So how do you capture that part of it? Like in so mind map does not capture end-to-end -end scenarios. Like I understand all those step one, two, three, they're part of a end-to-end uh, -end scenario only. So mind map captures functionality. It does not capture an end-to-end -end scenario. You can definitely uh, create end-to-end -end scenarios from this, but there's no flow-based system in a mind map. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Anyone else? We got about two minutes. Yeah. One here. Right, cool. I'll, I'll, I won't run. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Hi. Uh, so I'm a big fan of mind maps for all the reasons that you listed. Uh, and I think one of the big frustrations that myself and I think my team members have had is that something else I think other people have covered as well is the lack of kind of execution status. Like sometimes I feel like I use MindMeister. I feel like I'm in Photoshop sometimes. So like I, I miss the kind of previous functionality of other test case management systems right. where it was just like ding, pass, right? Um, personally, what tool do you use? Or what do you feel is like the easiest in terms of maybe tracking execution status? So I've worked in a startup and they don't like pay too much attention to numbers. Oh. So it was my individual uh, conscience which helped me. Like I have to do a tick. I have to uh, uh, capture the numbers and updating them in Excel file or any test rail wasn't working. So this definitely worked. But if you have to like get the numbers from mind maps, I really don't know if there's... Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's less... I don't think other people are really concerned about my team. Yes. Numbers is more just like a personal yeah. thing for me. But yeah, I guess. Yeah. So that is something which I'm also figuring out. But like getting numbers from mind map. Right. Uh, but I know there are tools. I haven't tried them out. There are some paid tools available, which, yeah, which provide that functionality. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. All right. Um, there aren't any more. We got a 45-minute break coming up, so Jim Evans will be giving his keynote at 4:15. Be sure to be there. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks a lot.